Welcome everyone to a tutorial on how to draw a setup for an isometric drawing. Uh, this is what our final product will look like. Uh, before we get started, there's a few things you have to do. Um, I've already done them, but I'm going to show you how to set up, like, create the new files. Uh, you go to File New. You want to create the same size as your paper size, so we'll be working on an 18 by 24 sheet. Um, and the really important part here is to match the resolution between Illustrator and Photoshop. So here we have it at 72. Um, so there, that's what this file that I've just made is, is 72, 18 by 24. Um, so you need to match that up with the Photoshop's 18 by 24, along with the resolution of 72. That'll make it so when you switch back and forth, things don't get bigger or smaller. It's, it will not work out if you do not have these matching. So after you've created the two files, you'll start off in Photoshop. Um, you need two pictures in order to do this. So I have these two. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm assuming you know how to place pictures in there. If not, file place. You can put them in there, and you also probably know how to size them, which is the transform tool, which is control T. After that, you need to make sure they match up height wise. Um, that's how I brought in the rulers. You can go to view and then show rulers if you can't find those, and then you can use the guidelines. Um, so, what I've done here is I've made a box around the drawing which is 10 inches by 8 inches, which I have um, come across that being the biggest you can kind of fit on the 18 by 24 once you turn isometric. Um, you know, the 8 inches tall can go higher, obviously, but 10 inches is as wide as you can get. Um, so once you have this in the box, you need to match the heights. So that's what these two guidelines are. They are matching the heights. Even you need to match the heights and that's it is because you're matching the y's in the coordinate system uh, the other one one of them has the x and the other one has the z so you don't need to match those up you just need to match the y um, once you have those two sized and they're in the box we're going to be placing the grid into here um, so for this tutorial i've uploaded this file um, it contains a grid which is easy to make it's in the line triangular grid tool. Um, the isometric grid that I've made, uh, that requires a little more thought, um, but you know, it's pretty easy. You can do it all with the line tool and you know, you can make it go faster if you use the grid tool and the line tool common combining. But I don't need to show you how to make those because they're going to be able to download those. Okay. Um, so. What we're doing here is we're going to bring in the box, which will fit perfectly into this box that we've made. Um, another good guideline for when you're making these guidelines, when you grab on the ruler and you pull them, uh, you can kind of place them wherever you want, but if you hold down shift, it'll actually jump from each line to the next line, and that's how I get the exact measurement from the 4 to the 14, which is the 10 inches. So use the shift when you're placing guidelines. That'll help you out. Um, now we're going to paste in the grid uh, and then place it where you want it. Um, now you can use the arrow keys to nudge back and forth until you get it in the right spot. You can see here that the lines turn red, so that shows that that's the right spot. Hit enter, it'll drop it in. Um, so that's that part, but we don't really need the grid right now, what we need is a separate layer of just the lines for here, so we're going to use the line tool and use the line tool and, and you, 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 you kind of just click on the points that match for your the, that you drew on the model. Um, you'll notice that I made two lines here and they're two separate layers and that gets annoying because you obviously have a lot of lines to draw here so if you click on the button up here, which is add to shape plus area, um, that'll make so all your lines are on the same uh, layer, which is really helpful because then you can change the properties there and you can make 
the whole thing without having to flatten it afterwards or do anything like that. Um, so this, for the sake of the tutorial, I already have these drawn up. Uh, that's the other side view, and then this is the view we're in currently. Um, so once you have those drawn up, you're gonna want to make a new one between. Uh, let me get rid of these real quick. All right, um, you're gonna want to make the layer with the grid on it and the layer that you have drawn on it in a new one. Um, there's a few ways to do that because now we don't need that. Um, let me create a new layer and fill it black so you guys or fill it white so you can see what's going on. Um, so right here we have the two and we want them to make them one layer so there's a few ways to do that. You could actually select them both, drag them to the new layer file and that'll actually make a copy and then you can merge those by right clicking and clicking merge layers. Um, the way I like to do it is by it's a shortcut you hit Alt, Control, Shift, and E, and that'll make a new layer here. That's it's the command just to make a layer of anything that's visible. Um, so by doing that, now I actually grab the white. You'll um, create a new layer, and that's what you need to use. I'm gonna have to get rid of the white because I don't want that to be part of my layer. Um, I'll turn it back on after. Um, so you do that with that that one, and then you need the other one, so let's turn that off. And grab this, create a new layer here. So now you have those both. I'll turn on the white background again. All right, so now you have a single file layer these two here, um, that are the elevations you want, and now once we have these two elevations, we need to put it into the isometric box. Um, so let's grab the isometric box from Illustrator, copy it in, control copy, or control C. Uh, and then control V. Uh, nicely enough, once you click the smart objects, it actually places it in the center, so you don't have to worry about that. So you hit enter. Um, so this is the part a lot of people don't really get, but it actually works out. Um, you're going to be want to putting this on this side, and this one on this side. So in order to do that, it's actually pretty easy. You click on the layer you want, hit Control T for the transform, bring this side in until it matches that. Now, it may seem kind of weird at first because you're shrinking it, but you actually it'll work out because now you need to distort it down. Click the distort tool, click on the middle of the side, bring it down, and once it matches up, you can see it actually matches up with the grid that I create on the back. So that's how you know you did it right. Those grids will match. So once you have placed that there, you place the other one. Control T for transform. Move this to the inside. Once that's there, right click. Um, distort. Click on the middle one. Pull it down until it matches. And then hit enter. So now you have them both in the box in the grid. They match up to the grid. And now you need to project the lines. So for doing that, we bring it into Illustrator. So, oh. so for doing for doing that, um, we're actually going to cre create another layer because you can't you can't grab in layers that are different ones. So you have to create a new one. Uh, the same way we merge the other ones together. So you can hit Alt Shift Control E, and that makes this new layer. Now I can hit uh, Control. All and Control A, which does the marquee for everything. Control C C, 
which copies it. Now we bring in an Illustrator, and you, you, could, you could paste it right, right in. Right in. Um, and then you get all, you get all you have to do is match it up to the lines here. There you go. Um, now, now once you have it in here, you use the, the line tool, which line segment tool, and you just zoom in. You only do one side, but if you click, if you click and you don't drag it anywhere, it'll bring up a box. Um, yeah, great. Well, it will should bring up a dialog box. Um, okay, here we go. And label it 10 inches because that's as far as the box actually reach. And then you change the angle to match this angle going here, which is at a 30 degree, but in the pie chart, it's actually 330 degree angles. Um, so you place that there. Um, you'll notice that the line tool actually doesn't have any color to it in the beginning, so we're gonna have to add color to make it appear, otherwise, it'll end up uh, just being nothing. So pretty much once you do this, you go through each spot you want to, you know, find the point to match. And you go through all of them. Now, once you have that, um, it should look, you know, something like this. And this is pretty much where you print it out and you do the rest by hand because you could, you could, um, you know, put put it here and mark it at the 210 degree. But once you project all these, it's just going to get confusing and it's a lot easier to use the 30 degree triangle to match it up because you only need to get that point to match. Um, you know, so. Don't do the other side. It takes too much time, and just do it by hand. Construct the rest by hand, and there you go. That's that's the end of it. If you have any questions, uh, just post them in the comments. Or if you need me to explain something more, you can also post it there. Um, hopefully, this helps you. Out.